ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praises due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who is truly worthy of all praise. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To Allah belongs the most beautiful names. And to Allah belongs attributes of complete perfection. And indeed all thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is the source of all blessings. And peace and salutations upon the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent as a mercy to all of the alameen. To proceed, first and foremost, I advise myself and I advise you with the taqwa of Allah Taala, in the hidden and in the open. For indeed, there is no doubt that the taqwa of Allah Taala is the provision and the means to arrive at the pleasure of Allah Taala. To proceed, there is no doubt that the greatest of all of the blessings which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has bestowed upon the slaves is that He has blessed them with Islam. This blessing is so great. Allah Taala Taala tells us in the Quran. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. Allah تبارك وتعالى tells us in this ayah, an ayah which we recite so often, but how many of us truly appreciate what it means? That Allah تبارك وتعالى tells us this day I have completed your religion and perfected. My favor upon you and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. The implications of that is what? That this religion is perfect. There is no additions that can make it better. Nor can anything be taken away from it. For both of those will cause it to be deficient. And Allah Taala said, وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَةِ with this blessing, Allah has perfected all of the blessings upon mankind. The one who will receive the complete blessings is the one who is following this religion. And finally, Allah says, وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ And I have chosen for you. This religion, Islam, as deen, there is no other religion which I have chosen. I have only chosen this one. The implications of that are so profound. But we still find that people in the dunya, they are turning left and right and they are following various divergent paths, leading away from the path of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala tells us, Inna deen and Allah is now. Indeed, the only deen which Allah accepts is Al-Islam. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala tells us in another ayah, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرِ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرِ الْخَاسِرِينَ نَسَلُ اللَّهِ سَلَامُ تَوَلَعَفِي Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala tells us, and whoever strives or chooses a religion other than Islam, فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ It will not be accepted from him. What is deen? It is a path which a person takes to worship Allah 
So what is he doing? He's worshipping Allah. Allah will not accept it from him. The only thing that Allah will accept from him is Islam. And if he doesn't come with Islam, then whatever he bought will be rejected. <laughs> and Allah Taala says, <laughs> And in the hereafter, he is from the losers. He has lost his akhir. So imagine this favor which Allah has bestowed upon us. That we have not only found this religion, but we have embraced it. And we endeavor and strive to follow it. And whilst our understanding is not all the same, maybe some people's understanding of this religion is far greater because their knowledge is greater. And others, their knowledge is less. The experience is less. However, and nevertheless, we are still all striving to follow and be upon this religion. And Allah Taala, when He sent this religion, He sent with it Nabi Kareem. He sent with it a noble prophet. And this noble prophet was wise in the way He called to it. And He was honest and loyal when he called to it. And as a result of that, Allah Taala chose the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet thereby, he propagated the risala, the message which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said to him. And he fulfilled his oath to Allah Taala. And he advised the Ummah. And Allah, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as the scholars often say, وَجَاهَدَ فِي اللَّهِ قَجِهَادِ He strove in the path of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala with truth and righteousness in the way that it should have been done. And he continued to do that حَتَّى أَتَاهُ الْيَقِينَ Until death came to him. Brothers and sisters, not only we're blessed with this great religion, but a Nabi who has come and who has done his duty and has propagated this religion. But all of this has various components which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added for this to be possible. And from of those, from amongst those, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for this Nabi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last of the Anbiya and the best of the Anbiya and the most beloved to Allah and the most beloved to his Ummah before and ahead of anybody else he chose for him companions companions who would stand with him and these companions were noble men not only were they noble men but they were the helpers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they were all just udul, thiqat. They were truthful. They stood with the Prophet wasallam, and they, they spent everything in the past of propagating this religion. Their lives, the lives of their families and their children, their homes, their wealth, everything that was called for, they put it to the service of this religion. Hence Allah Taala tells us about them and about the sacrifices that they made because indeed they succeeded. What did they succeed with? Earning the pleasure of Allah Taala with all of this. So Allah Taala says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه سورة التوبة الله تبارك وتعالى says and the predecessors the first of the predecessors from the muhajideen from the migrants wal ansar and from the aiders and those who follow them bi ihsan in goodness Allah تبارك وتعالى says concerning them رضي الله عنه Allah is pleased with them ورضوا عنه he is pleased with them, and they are pleased with him. 
subhanAllah, never could there be a more clear tizkiya for anybody from amongst mankind than the one which is divine. Recite it until the day of judgment. Tazkiyah for them, for what they were. Allah Taala said about them, radiyallahu <laughs> anhu, Allah is pleased with them. And if Allah is pleased with them, then why is it that this ummah should be pleased with them? And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed this ayah in the Quran as a tizkiyah to them, then this is something which raises their rank. That we should see them in the rank that they belong in. Allah Taala told us about the Prophet وسلم, and his companions. In Surah Al-Fatih, Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُمْ And those who are with him. So Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, and those who are with him. What about them, O Allah? أَشِدَّعُ وَالْخُفَارِ رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ They are severe against the disbelievers. رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ And they are merciful. They are merciful amongst one another. Then Allah Taala says, تَرَاهُ مُكَّانْ سُجَّدًا يَبَتَعُونَ فَضْرًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا you see them, how do you see them? You find them either bowing or prostrating. Why are they doing all of this? Because they hope to arrive at, at what? The Rilwan of Allah. Allah's pleasure, that Allah is pleased with them. And also His Fadl, His Bounty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them. The signs are apparent in their faces from prostration. And the likeness of them is found in the Torah and found in the Injil. Allah Taala, when He describes them in Surah Al-Fatih with such a description, He says that is the description in the Torah and the description in the Injil. Like a seed produces and it puts forth its sprout, then strengthens it so it becomes stout and stands firmly on its stem, delighting the sowers that He, Allah Taala, may enrage the unbelievers on account of them. And Allah has provided us, promised those among them who believe and do good actions, <laughs> forgiveness and a good reward. <laughs> These are the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And how many ayahs you find where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising them for their faith and their purity and their truthfulness and their loyalty and their sacrifices, <coughs> but also upon the tongue of the Prophet <coughs> We find Allah's Messenger وسلم, saying, La tasubbu ashabi. Do not defame or degrade my companions. Do not disparage my companions. For walladhi nafsi bi yadi. Then Allah's Messenger says, swears by Allah. He says, by the one in whose hand is mine, Life. لو أنفق أحدكم مثل أحد ذهب ما بلغ مد أحدهم ولا نسيف. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that if any one of you, swearing by Allah, any one of you, if any one of you were to give a volume of gold in sadaqa in giving to uh, giving alms or giving sadaqa to the people which was the amount or the volume of the mountain of Uhud. It would not be equal to what my companions gave, a handful or half a handful. That is the status of those people. That what they gave, a handful or half a handful, now if we were to give the likeness of that mountain, which is one of the Ma'alim of Medina, 
one of the things which is one of the descriptions of Medina, the mountain of Uhud, if we were to give that in gold, it would not rival what they give in a handful or half a handful. Indeed, the companions of the Prophet have a status which should be recognized. But does that status mean that all of them are the same? It doesn't mean that. Indeed, Allah Taala doesn't regard all of them the same. In fact, Allah Taala tells us, لا يستوي منكم من أنفق من قبل الفتح وقاتا أولئك أعظم درجة من من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا. Allah Taala says that they are not equal. From amongst you, they're not equal. Those who spent before the conquest of Mecca and they fought, they are greater in status than those who spent and fought after the conquest of Mecca. So Allah tells them that they are not all the same status. The Prophet was sitting with his companions as is narrated in the Tirmidhi with the Isnad which is Thabit, Sahih. On the authority of Abdul Rahman ibn Awf the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Abu Bakr fil Jannah. Abu Bakr fil Jannah. Who is saying this? The one who doesn't speak from his own desires. He doesn't speak from his own desires, he speaks from revelation which is inspired to him. So he says, Abu Bakr fil Jannah. What is it upon us to say? No, he's not. And oppose the Messenger of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad Abu Bakr fil Jannah. And then he says, Wa Umar fil Jannah. And Umar is in Jannah. Wa Uthman fil Jannah. And Uthman is in Jannah. Wa Ali fil Jannah. And Ali is in Jannah. Wa Talha fil Jannah. And Talha is in Jannah. Wa Saad fil Jannah. And Saad is in Jannah. Wa Saeed fil Jannah. And Saeed is in Jannah. Wa Abdurrahman ibn Awf fil Jannah. And Abdul Rahman ibn Awf is in Jannah. Was Zubair fil Jannah. And Zubair is also in the, the paradise. Wa Amr, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah fil Jannah. Ten of the companions of Prophet said, whilst they were still breathing, whilst they were still treading upon the earth with, with, with earthly feet, they were promised paradise. Allah's Messenger said, all of them are in Jannah. Now is it upon us to say, no, they're not in Jannah? In fact, some of the companions they used to say, as is narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu wa nabi, he says, Kunna fi zamin Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam naqul. We used to say the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khairu ashabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr. We used to say the best of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Abu Bakr. Thumma Umar. Then we used to say, then after him, Umar. When we used to say this, this speech of ours used to reach the Prophet and he never used to rebuke us or stop us. And when the Prophet hears something and he doesn't reject it, this is from the taqreerat of the Prophet If he hears something, and he doesn't stop it or oppose it, then this goes to show that he agrees with it. In fact, if we look at what Muhammad ibn Hanafiya said, he said that I asked my father, yani Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, ayyu sahabat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khair, which are the best of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So he's asking one of the best of the companions, who is the best of the companions? One of the family of the Prophet, who is the best of the companions? So Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is the best. When you are asked who's the best, you're not going to say who's the fourth best or the fifth best. You asked who's the best, so you're going to get the first answer is going to be the best is Abu Bakr. Then he said, I asked him, 
who else after him? So he replied, Qala Umar. He said, after him, Umar. Umar bin Khattab. So he said, Thumma Anta. Then I asked, then you. So look at Ali radiallahu anhu and his tawab. He says, Ma ana illa wahidun min al-Muslimin. I am only one of the Muslims. So when he asks him, are you the next one after Umar? He says, I am only one of the Muslims. I am only one of the Muslims. Look at what is sabit from Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu as is in the book called As-Sunnah by Ibn Abi Asim. There's a tahqiq of this book by Shaykh Muhammad Asim ibn al-Mani. And this is a book which has so many athar from the companions and from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in that book, it is mentioned that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, لا يبلغني أن أحد أنه يفضلني على أبو بكر العمر إلا جلدته حد المفتري He says I should not hear from anyone amongst you that he gives me precedence or merit over Abu Bakr al-Umar and if I find anybody doing that then I will have him whipped for slander I will have him whipped for slander who is saying this? In fact, hadith which is sabit from the Prophet from the authority of Sayyidina Ali himself, he said, Sayyid Akhul Ahu Jannah Abu Bakr wa Umar, Min al Awwalina wal Akhri, Adan Nabim wal Musaleen. The Prophet said that the leaders of the people of paradise are Abu Bakr and Umar from the first and the last of all of the people beside the prophets and the messengers. Brothers and sisters, why are we going to such extent to explain about the status of the companions? The companions of the Prophet wasallam, they were the carriers of the religion. They were the ones who through their efforts, this religion arrived to us. They were the writers of revelation, whether that was in the form of the Quran or whether it was in the form of the Sunnah. If we find today somebody blaming this generation and saying disparaging things concerning them, anybody who blames them and he mocks them and he says bad things about them, then in, in essence he is blaming the religion. Because these are the people who brought this religion to us. They were the carriers of this religion. They were the writers of revelation. They heard, they saw with their eyes the Prophet And they witnessed his statements. And they wrote them down and preserved them and memorized them and taught them. They were the ones who understood this religion as it should have been understood. <coughs> and they were the ones who taught us how to carry out the junctions of the Quran. Now if somebody were to blame them, then he blames the religion. And in fact, blaming the companions is blaming the prophets. To say that the prophet's companions apostated, <coughs> what does it say about the prophets of Allah? In fact, one of the great scholars of the past, Abu Zur al Razi, he says, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الرَّجَلْ يَنْتَقِسُ أَحَدٍ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ زِنْدِيقَ He says, if you see any of the people, he belittles any one of the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, then know that he is an apostate. لَنَّ الْقُرَانْ حَقٌ وَالدِّينُ حَقٌ and he says, because the Quran is true and the religion is truth. And the ones who caused that to arrive to us were the companions. He says that those people they intended by making jirh or by disparaging the companions 
they were our witnesses. By disparaging them, they have intended by that to disparage the religion, and they are indeed more worthy of being disparaged than the companions. Brothers and sisters, the status of the companions of the Prophet is not something which is easy. And what we find today that there are some people that all that they have time for is to disparage the companions of the Prophet and thereby, thereby they have now led an assault against the religion, against the Quran, because who were the writers of the Quran and the members of the Quran, and against the Sunnah of the Prophet In fact, what they have done is given a hand to those who opposed Islam and never entered Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from their evil. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people when we hear the truth, recognize the truth and give us the ability to act upon it. And also make us a people when we hear the false, recognize the false and give us the ability to avoid it. But I call on